being used significantly for long term infrastructure investment if you were looking at the state of michigan where could we be building or what could we be building and what could we be using those dollars for for real stimulus meaning we would be building infrastructure that our kids would benefit from we need a new train tunnel between windsor and detroit sounds like a good idea to build that tunnel with stimulus dollars it is a long term investment right now Detroit and Michigan. We are on the main link between Ontario and the United States. That traffic comes through the state of Michigan, goes through that tunnel that we currently have. The problem is, if you take a look at the trains coming through, the trains coming to the tunnel, they're stacked too high with the containers. They get to the tunnel, they got to take the top one off, set it aside, take the train through, put the container on another carrier, take it underneath the river. Uh, when they get to the other side of the, the river, they put the container back on. It's not a very efficient way to move goods from Canada into the United States. We need a new train tunnel. Build a new train tunnel that will accommodate a double-decker to make sure that Michigan and the Midwest stay competitive because we've got an efficient transportation corridor. We need a new bridge between Detroit and Windsor build a new bridge it will last a long time we have a lot of minerals that we take out of the up that we take out of minnesota that go through lake superior and go down to the lower great lakes we need a new sioux lock if we're worried about stimulus and we're going to have federal stimulus dollars being spent let's use it on things that make a real difference and will provide us a competitive advantage and strengthen our economy and will benefit our kids and our grandkids rather than spending it on projects that don't have much of a long-term benefit. What are some of the things that we're going to be building in Michigan with our stimulus dollars? $500,000 to renovate a facility which may house yoga or children's movement classes. $6.9 million dollars to put in 29 intelligence transportation system signs in four West Michigan counties. I'm assuming that these big electronic signs will be put up to warn the motorist about the potholes that are ahead because we're building signs instead of repairing the roads. We're going to be spending $983,000 for streetscaping. We're going to be spending $1.3 million for construction of a wastewater treatment plant for which there may be no plan and has little community support. And of course, every time, whether you're in Michigan or whether you're in some other state around the country, you're going to see these wonderful signs that say, this project was brought to you by the stimulus package. These signs cost anywhere from $300 to $1,000 a piece. They don't fill one pothole. They don't pave one increment of road. Uh, but yet we're spending those to remind you that your money that came to Washington, D.C., actually the money that Washington, D.C. is borrowing for the stimulus package, you ought to thank us for borrowing this money. So we put up the sign to remind you where it came from. But we don't say this road or this project to is brought to you by your kids and your grandkids. We seem to think that it's brought to you by your Congress, and you should be thankful for the stuff that we've done. You know, we've just approached uh, and gone over uh, a trillion dollars of deficit spending for this fiscal year, and the fiscal year doesn't end until September 30. So we've still got July, August, and September to go, and there are many that are saying that the deficit for this fiscal year will probably exceed one and a half trillion dollars. That is something that our kids will not be thankful for, and it's something that they will carry long into their future. But in addition to you know, that kind of spending, again, if the model is cut taxes, free spending, and reform government, where are we headed today in Washington, D.C., in, in regards to cutting taxes? We are not going to cut taxes. We are actually going to increase taxes on the American people. It is estimated uh, by some accounts that the cap and trade, the cap and tax bill that we passed uh, through this chamber uh, a few weeks ago is going to cost the average American family about $3,100 per year. 
Now, you may not see this as a tax bill that you'll have to write a check to the federal government for, but what you will see it in is you will see it in increased cost for electricity, for gasoline, and any other product that, when you consume it, has a carbon uh, emission. It's a carbon tax. And so you will see the cost of goods, the cost of services increase uh, for every American family. It will also make it more difficult for American businesses to compete, to invest, and to grow our economy. Again, in Michigan, we are a heavy manufacturing state. What does cap and trade do to the state of Michigan? What, it, what does it do to the Midwest? It hammers the Midwest. We have a lot of coal-fired plants. They do have carbon emissions. They will be heavily taxed, heavily regulated, and the cost of producing energy out of those plants will increase significantly. I've got a lot of foundries in my district. What do foundries do? They melt steel, they melt aluminum, they pour them in a mold, uh, they wait for them to cool, they take the mold out, uh, and you've got a, a, a piece of, uh, of metal that has been molded and shaped and then will be machined and then will become part of a car or become a part of another product. That consumes a tremendous amount of energy. What do we think will happen to that business if cap and trade becomes the law of the land and that business sees its energy costs go up by 50 to 70 percent? Remember, this is a large input cost to this business. It's a cost of production. They will start looking for alternatives. And where will those alternatives be? Will they be someplace else in the United States? Probably not, because these facilities and the similar facilities in the United States will all be experiencing these kinds of costs increase. Where will they begin looking? They will begin looking in places like China. They will begin looking in places like India and Mexico, the countries that do not, that do not have these types of regulatory burdens placed on them. So again, it is an indirect tax on jobs and businesses, and the result will be you know, more and more counties in my state and more and more counties around the country will start shading these pink counties from being pink to being purple, meaning that the unemployment rate is going to continue to increase. You know, we see it both at the state level and at the federal level. The model that my, my counterparts on the other side are using to their belief to grow the economy is to increase taxes, to grow spending, and really to reform nothing. I'll give you one example of where we're not seeing a lot of effective reform. There's a couple of things you ought to know about this chart. Number one, the Speaker of the House um, and uh, counterparts on the other side have said this chart is unapproved for public use. Actually, it's unapproved for us uh, to send to our constituents uh, under the franking process. So if someone calls my office and they say, Congressman Hookstra, we'd like a better understanding of how this new health care proposal uh, is going to work or what the structure is going to be for that new plan. You know, when all of the, uh, that's another new tax that's coming as well, but as the president proposes and as my colleagues on the other side of the, the aisle pro propose a new plan for health care, what does that system exactly look like? I don't know if this chart's right, but we had some really bright people come together and read the thousand pages of rules and regulations of the new health care bill. And as they read it, they tried to put an organizational structure to it to say, here's how it's going to work. And this is the process, and this, these are the different kinds of organizations that are going to be necessary or, identi or, or are identified by name in the legislation.